Where are you, bud? There you are. Good morning. Oh, I'm dizzy trying to look up there. What you doing, bud? Good morning, everybody. Knox, I'll take you for a walk, bud. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? I have officially become the bird lady. I'm just out here waiting for George and Judy. I saw them this morning. Um, I went from my bed. I saw Judy on the ledge. I assume it's Judy because she looks a little plumper and I'm guessing she has the eggs inside her. But I don't really know how baby eggs like birds are born. So, um, So Michael and I are going to move the nest today. The nest is huge. So I don't know if Judy's planning on, you know, having a lot of babies or inviting other friends to come, but it's not a good time to have people over. So we're going to move the nest because the TV is coming down this weekend. And I know Judy is going to be so upset and I've already like been distraught over this. And when she comes back to this morning, I'm going to talk to her. Um, so I love that also so many of you are concerned about the birds because you should be concerned about the birds. <laughs> I love these birds. They're my friends right now. Um, I'm looking for them. I don't see them right now because I think because Knox is out here and they're afraid of the dog. Oh, there's no water in there, Bubba Ice. There's no water in there. There's no water in there. Oh my God, I love this dog so much. Um, I'm going to uh, check the nest. If there's already eggs in there, Michael and I are going to have to fist fight. I'm not kidding. We will have to have a knockdown, drag out, like, fight. We're not moving it if there's eggs in there. Hello, my love. Hello, sweet boy. Hello, sweet boy. I'm going to take you for a walk, but you you gotta, you have to stay over here because Judy and George are scared of you. Hi. Hi. He wants to come up. Here he comes. Oh, you slip. You slip. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. So cute. Um, anyway, so I wanted to talk to you guys about something that is really, really upsetting to me, okay? Um, and I'm really having a hard time how to navigate it. Just hear me out, okay? Just hear me out. There are people right now sharing and spreading the craziest conspiracy theories about other people, about the virus, about life, about dogs. Uh, dogs are the reason for this. And <clears throat> and discernment, discernment, um is is a skill that is really really important for people discernment is the ability to decide whether you should engage in a conversation or an action is it good is it healthy is it necessary 
you can discern whether this is something that needs to be repeated or shared or invested in or pushed forward, right? Um, discernment is something we learn when we follow God. Uh, you don't have to follow God to practice discernment, but it is something that we are taught as followers of Christ in that, uh, you know, people would make things up about Jesus and then they would run and spread it to the next town so that before Jesus got there, people would already have, um, preconceived notions about who Jesus was and why he was bad and whatever. And then people began to practice discernment and say, someone would tell them, go, go tell them bad things about Jesus. And people would say, I don't, I don't know that I want to do that. That doesn't feel good. That's discernment, right? Um, and I understand that people, as Americans especially, we need something tangible to hold on to in our lives. When painful things happen to us, right? Our husbands have an affair. We lose our job, right? Hear me out. We get fired from our job. Our husband has an affair. We need something tangible to hold on to. We need to be able to show people a reason. I was fired because my boss was skimming money from the top and I knew, right? We need to start like we need things that we can justify and say, right? So now we're in the middle of a, uh, of a pandemic, right? It's very scary for all of us. Not necessarily scared that we're going to get the virus, but scared about other people we love or what will happen to this country financially or, you know, whatever. And, and, and I had, uh, okay, one person say, uh, oh, it's so coincidental that gas prices have gone down. And she started going on and on about this conspiracy theory. And I said, well, gas prices have gone down because less people are buying gas. When gas is in need, prices go up. When less people are using it, prices go down. Will prices on food and and things like commodities go up? Yes, because more people are buying hand sanitizer. The need is greater, so people can charge more. It's supply and demand. It's not a conspiracy theory. It is literally supply and demand. But the Pope is a pedophile. Um, okay, okay, okay. I understand that we, we, we want to make sense of this. I do. We want to make sense of this. Lord knows we all want to make sense of this. Would it be easier to simply believe that this was a man-made virus and this was all a conspiracy from the top. I don't know if that's easier. I think it's fucking heartbreaking to have to believe that human beings would do this to each other intentionally. My God, literally my God. If that is what it was, where is my God? But I spoke to my brother-in-law who is head of infectious disease for malaria last night at... Um, Oh, I can touch my face, sweetheart. I've been in my house for days. I'm good. I can pick my own nose and sit out here all day shoving my fingers into my eyeballs. Nobody has come in contact with me. I'm good. Um, and I spoke to him about viruses and the way they originate and what I could make sense of and what I couldn't. And... You know, it is, it is scary when we lose the ability to discern. And I'm not just talking about this virus. I am talking about our lives. Our lives. In our own lives, we struggle with discernment because we want to deflect. We don't ever want to deal with who and what we are when it is so much easier to believe bad about other people and then share it. Don't look at me and what's going on in my house. Can I sell you a story about the people to the left? 
somebody comes to you and tells you something about somebody, right? You can practice discernment. You can say, I don't think I want to digest this. I don't think I want to share this. I don't think I want to absorb this. Every single thing you read or consume, you absorb. It becomes your, oh, hi, Judy. Judy, we got to talk, honey. Oh, she's got all kinds of things now. Oh, oh, it's George. Okay. Oh, all right, George. George, bring Judy back. Oh, I'm so upset about this bird's nest. You have no idea. Um, this isn't a political thing. This isn't a religious thing. This is protecting your body from consumption of the unnecessary. I love you so much. I don't give a shit who you vote for, what religion you practice, who you have sex with, how much money you have, what color you are, how fat you are, how skinny you are, how tall or short you are. I don't give two flying monkey fucks about any of that because I was called to just love you. So I just love you. But I am concerned about the lack of discernment and what we are allowing to penetrate our barrier. What we allow to penetrate us affects the way we sleep, the way we eat, the way we feel, the way we look at other people. I got people looking at Tom Hanks sideways right now talking about Tom Hanks was really arrested in Australia. He didn't really have the coronavirus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Those are big accusations against with zero proof. Can we take it back a notch? People said Jesus was practicing black magic. He was voodoo. He was bad. He was devil. He was this. First of all, how are you going to be the devil if you don't even believe in God? So, eh, right? If we could just discern what we allow into our space, we will eat better, sleep better, feel better. We will build our immunity right? Our immunities fall when we are constantly in a state of stress and disarray. I, I, in your life, when people bring you things, anything about a, another woman, about a boss, about a lover, about an anything, right? <clears throat> you have to practice discernment. Do I want to take this in? Do I want to carry this? Do I want to absorb this? Do I want to let it in? It's not just the food you eat. It's the information you are allowing into your world. That's why people always go, can I be a guest on Coffee Talk? And I'm like, I don't know because I practice discernment and I don't know what I want to expose the Coffee Talk family to because I don't know what you're about to say. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you have. So... I don't, oof. All I'm saying is if you believe a conspiracy theory or you believe something to be true about someone in your neighborhood, someone you work with, someone in Hollywood, someone at the Vatican, someone whatever, just keep it to yourself. You're not protecting anyone by sharing these unfounded thoughts about your boss or your whatever because someone told you, everybody got a friend that works at the CDC right now. I never saw anything like it. All of a sudden, we got friends at the White House, the CDC, the FBI. I'm like, bitch, you have never in your life, you have not even been to Washington, D.C., and all of a sudden, you got 10 friends at work in the White House? Oh, my God, I did not know. Your friend of a friend of a friend flies uh, Air Force One, who... Then his dog knew the dog that lived there before, the bow with the friend in the car in the Chelsea. What? You're giving me a headache. It's giving me a headache. And I can't discern. It's coming at us from all angles. And we have got to, we are got to, it's spiritual warfare. We have got to literally be protectants of our own brain space. And use discernment about what we let in. See, now Charlie's trying to talk to me right now. I'm using discernment. I'm going to act like I don't hear it. 
I can't hear you. La 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 la. Pop 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 pop. Mom. La la la. I'm Mom. discerning right now. My milkshake bring all the bark to the yard. Oh, don't touch me, girl. Social distancing. Back up. Back up. Talk to me from six feet. What can I do for you? Well, thank you for that announcement. <laughs> okay. Okay. Whoo! Okay, shut the door. <laughs> shut the door. Who wants a child? No. <laughs> Get inside and shut the door. Okay. You're lucky you're cute. Take the dog inside, too. He's scaring the birds. No, Amy. We don't have to admit that everything is kind of sketchy. See? We don't have to admit that. But if you believe that, I respect that. Just don't share that because conspiracy theories and thoughts and doesn't this seem weird, that is also a virus. And it is not helping people who are trying to stay emotionally and mentally healthy. Judy? Hi. Uh, George, it's you again. I need, the, I need the mom. I can't talk to you. Where is she? Oh, I'm getting upset. Judy's not coming. Do you think she's in the nest? Hi, George. 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 Okay. God, they come quick. In and out. In and out. Do you guys want to see the nest, though? It's, like, huge. Um, eh, I don't know. Maybe it'll just upset you. But I am going to show you the nest when we take it out so you can see. I think it's a sparrow. I think. I mean, I'm not a bird expert. Unless you don't subscribe to discernment and then I'm a bird expert. My name is Jamie Premack and I'm a bird expert. Let me tell you how birds are spreading this virus and they're killing us. Starting with Ellen DeGeneres. Um, the dog's trying. Woman, you're losing it. Uh, Probably. I'm just upset because um, I'm really, really worried about people. Like I, like I'm je- like, I feel like not everybody is as like, there are people right now who are genuinely terrified, terrified, <laughs> terrified bagels. I don't know what I'm saying. You're right. I am losing it. And it, it worries me. I have, I have friends who are hearing things about their jobs, conspiracy theories about their jobs and about how, you know, like this is coming from the top and they're doing this to get rid of nightlife because they want to get rid of the gays. And I'm like, listen to what you're saying. You think the government created a virus so they could shut down bars and restaurants because they're trying to get rid of the gays? How do you think that makes my gay friends feel? That is, that is, that is not discernment. That is, that is not discernment. That is unnecessary. And if you believe it, keep it to yourself. Poor, just love people right now. Just love people. Pray for our doctors, our nurses, our first responders, our police, our firemen, our firewomen, our women, all the women. Everybody has anxiety on top of their anxiety right now, you know, but like, I just want to be sure that right now we're not spreading mental and emotional viruses on top of what we're already quarantined from. We're protecting ourselves from the physical, but our mental and emotional are deteriorating at a rapid rate, rapid. Um, I want to show you. The nest. I love the nightlife. I... Okay, really, George? You've now... Hold on. I'm afraid to get on a chair and show it to you because 
I'm afraid that she might be inside there. And what if she like attacked me? Cause I haven't seen her this morning, but can you see it like at the very top? Oh, oh, see that beautiful nest. Look how hard they're working. It doesn't look very safe to me, but I'm very excited about this nest, guys. I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but I'm gonna put it somewhere safe for her. And yes, Tiffany, we are so grateful for you. Yeah, yes, so grateful for nurses, for doctors. My brother-in-law, they shut his lab down. He heads malaria, infectious disease. And instead of like just going home, right? Instead of just going home, he's going to the hospitals to, to, the, to, to move to the hospital to answer calls because he is a, an infectious disease doctor and can provide clarity to people calling who are terrified with symptoms in Maryland. Like he didn't have to do that. He could just go home and sit on the couch. <gasps> but instead... I have to move the nest, guys. If there's eggs, I will not uh, move it. I will fight Michael to the death. If there are eggs in that nest, Michael and I will get divorced before I move that freaking nest, okay? Because Judy and George have worked very hard. If there are no eggs, I have to move the nest. That is the deal, okay? Um. But I just want to say something about George and Judy. I really love them and they've brought everybody so much joy and that makes me happy. I have to move it because we're moving and the TV has to go to the new house so that people can install it outside. Listen, guys, Michael doesn't ask me for a lot. He wants the fucking TV, okay? But I'm not giving it to him if there's eggs in it. He's home today. We are moving the nest today. Um, yes, Michael's brother is head of infectious disease. Oh, oh, hi, George. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Watch, George is, he's going to come out of there. Watch. There he is. Hi, George. Oh, he goes so damn fast. I'm telling you, he goes, he drop. he drops the thing. I am moving it, Dia. I couldn't move it yesterday because Michael wasn't here yesterday and I can't move it myself. Guys, come on. All right, anyway, I got a bunch of stuff to do. Um, I will keep you posted on the nest. If there, if there are eggs in the nest, Nicole, I'm not moving it, just so you know. I'm absolutely not moving it. But I will find a place to move it. I need to Google where the best place to move a nest is. And then the nest will be moved. All right. I love you. I'm going to sit out here and watch my birds. Um, practice discernment today. If there is something that comes across your eyeballs that is not good for your mental or emotional, practice discernment. Do I need to read this? Do I need to look at it? Can I mute people for a while? You don't have to unfollow. Maybe mute is a nice thing, right? Um, I love you guys very much. Have a great, great day.